Now there's two things you guys have been asking for on this channel. One is for me to get a haircut and two is for me to review more indoor boots. Unfortunately, only one of those things is in my control right now, which is why we're gonna be reviewing these. The Nike Premier 2 Sala, an $85 kind of street slash indoor option that of course shares some elements from the Nike Premier 2. Think of these as Nike's alternative to the Adidas Samba Classic, which is admittedly cheaper and still a great pair of indoors slash casual wear shoes, but they're also a lot more old school with the Premier 2 Sala. Yes, it's a little bit more money, but you're getting much more modern materials and tech that I think, depending on what you're looking for, you might actually like better. So if you wanna learn more about these, including how they fit and feel on feet, we're gonna go over all the details in today's video. And if you're interested in a pair of these for yourself in this new blue colorway or any of the other ones that are currently available, some of which are deeply discounted already, you can click the first link down below or the little pop-up in the corner of the screen. That's gonna take you to the review page on my website where you'll find buy it now links with exclusive SR4U coupon codes we will be able to pick these up below their normal retail price. Also, if you guys enjoy the videos, please support this one with a like. It goes a long way. If you are new here watching for the first time and don't want to miss out on new videos every single week on everything football boots, be sure to subscribe. So as you can see, Nike really haven't reinvented the wheel here with the Premier 2 Sala. The design is very much Nike Premier 2, where you can see you have this leather, in this case, suede section at the front of the boot. So basically from the forefoot forward, very soft, same stitching pattern as the Premier 2 as well. And then it transitions into the midfoot area into like a mesh based material, which is there for the sake of shaving a little bit of weight. It doesn't really impact touch all that much. It does have a padding backing it. So in terms of thickness, it does actually match the suede leather portion of the front as well, which is really nice. And it makes the boot a little bit more flexible. Would I have preferred the entire upper to be suede? Definitely, but I don't really have a huge issue with what they've done here. And as far as the suede material itself is concerned, it is still a natural leather material. They haven't specified whether or not it's kangaroo leather. That's just not available information, but it feels very soft and on par with the K leather that you'd find on the normal Nike Premier 2, which I will also add, normally retails for 110 bucks for the FG variation. These are only 85, and there is actually a more true indoor variation, which is available in the black colorway with the regular tongue. It's basically the same upper as the regular FG variation, but it features a gum rubber outsole and is also available in a turf version where this model is only available as an indoor. Either way, touch on the ball is quite good and the materials used are quite premium. You also find a little bit more of that suede towards the heel, but that's basically just there for the sake of looks. And I guess it's gonna provide some extra grip on the ball should you need it for back heels or something like that. And that really is the benefit of suede. It's a little bit grippier on the ball and technically is going to be more durable than a smooth leather if you're using these in a street type environment where if you do kind of rub your foot against the ground, it's gonna scrape off that top layer where suede, like I said, is gonna take a little bit more of a beating. It might get rough over time, that's normal wear, but in general, it tends to be more durable. It does feature a regular central lacing system like a normal Nike Premier 2, but as you'll notice, it does not have the fold over flap tongue, which I think a lot of people actually prefer the look of. And honestly, for casual wear in an indoor type environment, I think this is definitely the right choice. What I'm not in love with is the tongue, which is basically just a mesh base with some padding running all the way through. It's a little bit more spongy than I would personally like it to be. It's not to say that it's bad in any way at all, but honestly, I wish it would have been a suede type material with a little bit of additional padding just to match the thickness of the rest of the upper. But what they've done here, like I said, is still very comfortable. With the laces tied tight, because they have gone with this mesh that is reinforced through the midfoot, the lockdown and general responsiveness is better than you might expect based on how it looks. Of course, moving to the rear, you will find a pretty standard low cut design like a regular Nike Premier 2, internal plastic heel counter, and then internally, this is a very premium element in my opinion, the entire heel liner is lined in a suede material with plenty of padding, it grips your socks very nicely, it's super comfortable, and again, for 85 bucks, it's a premium element that you don't necessarily expect. 
far as the insole is concerned. Surprisingly, it's the same insole you'd get on a regular Nike Premier 2, which is actually really good. It's this mesh material, but it has a little bit of texture. I don't want to call it roughness, but it's definitely not as smooth as the normal mesh. There's some texture in the foam as well that you can see. Either way, it does tend to grip your socks a little bit better than the Nike grip liners that you'll find on the normal top end models. And again, it's just the same insole you'd get in a Nike Premier 2 made from a single layer of this black foam. Definitely no complaints there. Moving to the midsole, you're going to find a Lunar Lawn setup. And honestly, the midsole and outsole is nothing new from Nike. This is something we've been seeing from the brand basically since 2014. So they are just reusing this tooling. And obviously the new React Gato, which is kind of taken over for the premier cushion within the Nike indoor range, React foam rather than Lunar foam. But still, the Lunar Lawn cushion setup here is really nice. It does require a little bit of break in time. It does feel firmer at first than it will after a couple of wears. But in general, the cushion setup is really nice. It's not particularly low profile. It's a little bit thicker towards the heel as you get into the forefoot and toe box area. But in general, it feels quite nice. And for this style of indoor boot, I don't think any pe many people are gonna have too many issues with them. You will find that the outsole does have this big rubber lip basically from the midfoot all the way through the forefoot and then cuts off at pretty much the same point here on the opposite side. That's great for the sake of durability, which is definitely a priority with a boot like this. And then the outsole has that kind of hexagon shaped pattern that we have seen from Nike many times before. It's not incredible on an indoor court, especially if it's a little bit dusty, you're gonna have to constantly wipe it down. But in a street soccer type environment, because it's very dense and the rubber is quite firm, it's actually really good in terms of overall durability and the traction on something like concrete or asphalt is also gonna be really solid. So as a street soccer type shoe, which is kind of what Nike was going for here, Honestly, this makes a lot of sense. And then finally, when it comes to weight, despite being kind of a more traditional looking design, they are lighter than you'd expect them to be, especially considering how much rubber you have to the outsole. So I'm gonna weigh this pair for you in real time. Keep in mind that this pair is a size 10 US, and you can see that they weigh in at 9.5 ounces, the equivalent of 269 grams, which is pretty much on par with most top end indoor models you're gonna find from the Nike line that have any significant amount of cushion and rubber to the outsole. So definitely not heavy, definitely not super lightweight. And again, if you're comparing this to the Adidas alternative, the Samba Classic, it's gonna offer a much lighter overall feel while also offering more substantial underfoot cushioning. So as you can see, I've swapped out the stock blue laces, which obviously match the boots really nicely, but I've changed them for some blue and black grid pattern SR4U replacement laces, which kind of match the darker shades of blue that you have on the upper. Plus it adds the grid pattern. I'm a really big fan of this design. I think it just makes the boots look that much more unique compared to everybody else with the same ones. It's a great way of changing up the style of your boots in an inexpensive way. If you're interested in some for yourself, the website to go to is www.sr4ulaces.com. There'll be a little pop-up on screen as well as a link down below in the description. So if you're interested in some for yourself, be sure to go ahead and check that out. On feet, the Premier 2 saddles feel really good. I think what's immediately noticeable is how soft and flexible the upper is. It has that slight amount of padding to it as well. And if we are again going to compare this to that Samba Classic, while those are leather, I don't think that the quality of the leather is quite to the same standard as the suede you have here in the toe box. And in general, they just don't feel as soft or nearly as padded. So from a comfort standpoint, it's really hard to deny that these aren't super comfortable football boots. As far as the Lunar Lawn underfoot cushioning is concerned, that's also definitely a highlight of this and a major plus over the Samba Classic, which will admittedly feel a little bit closer to the ground, but there's just significantly less underfoot cushioning. This Lunar Lawn setup, I think, feels really good. So no major complaints from me there. As far as width is concerned, they're obviously a suede and mesh material, so there's plenty of give to the upper, which means that these are gonna fit pretty much everybody. Obviously, the central lacing system with a regular tongue is very forgiving as well. So even if you did have wide feet, these are gonna fit pretty much everybody very comfortably. And as far as sizing is concerned, as mentioned earlier, I'm wearing these in a size 10 US. And as you can see, my toe is right at the end. They fit a little bit small compared to other Nike indoors that I've worn. So if you are looking to get a pair of these for yourself, I would recommend going a half size up versus a lot of other options out there. Yes, they're gonna stretch a little bit, but because of the way that they did the toe box 
with the rubber lip going around the edge. It just makes the boot feel a little bit tighter at the very tip of the toe. So going a half size up is what I'd recommend in order to achieve the best possible fit. So in conclusion, is the Nike Premier 2 Sala worth it? And I think the answer to that question is yes. Not only is it comfortable, I think the quality of materials used considering the price tag is really good and it also looks the part. So regardless of whether or not you plan on wearing them casually, the fact that you can and they don't look goofy in any way at all is something that I really appreciate. Considering how Nike really has this kind of tech forward approach with all of their footwear lately, this one is surprisingly simple and that's kind of what I like about it. They're not overcharging for it and what you get is pretty much everything that you need and nothing that you don't. It's not a perfect boot by any means, but for what you pay, I think it's hard to be mad at these. Anyways guys, that's it for my review. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, be sure to support it with a like. Again, if you're interested in a pair of these for yourself in this blue colorway or any of the other ones that are currently available, first link down below, that's gonna take you to the review page on my website where you'll find buy it now links with exclusive SR4U coupon codes to pick these up below their normal $85 retail price. If you have any questions or any suggestions for other indoors you'd like to see reviewed on the channel, leave that down below in the comment section. I'll do my best to get an answer out to you. If you aren't subscribed to the channel already, make sure you hit that subscribe button along with the little bell notification so you get notified when the next new video goes live. You can find all my social media information linked down below in the description as well. Other than that, guys, thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.